we're here for you. Check back every week and stay tuned. Welcome back to V Boys, you on the go gamers out there. So, the visual novel horror title has captured the PlayStation Feeded audience by storm. Thus, many game publishers have taken advantage of this and supplied us Vita fans with a massive plethora of visual novel titles. Naturally, the only issue that remains for us is which title is actually worth buying. In a new long-awaited entry into our Versus series, we take a look at three of the best PlayStation Vita visual novel titles and pit them each against each other. Before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button to enter our massive giveaway, which occurs each and every month. January's giveaway is a Glacier White PlayStation Vita 2000 and a very nice hoverboard. To enter the hit that subscribe button and leave a comment below. The winners will be announced on the 31st of each month. Now let's take a look at our competitors. First up is Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc versus Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward and finally Corpse Party Blood Drive. Let's begin with what makes the visual novel so special. We're going to start with the story. The story of Danganronpa is unlike anything else, and quite frankly, it had better be considering all the reading you're going to be forced to do during the course of this game. Every character and every moment present the player with a grand opportunity to discover yet another great story which all ultimately weave seamlessly together to provide gamers one of the best stories available on the PlayStation Vita. Players take on the role of Mikado Naegi, a uh, not-so-special kid who supposedly gets very lucky and finds himself in the most prestigious school in all of Japan. Unfortunately for Mikado and everyone else in the school, that great opportunity turns into a not-so-great killing spree. After arriving at the school, each of the kids are pit against each other and forced to murder one another. First kid to get away with a murder will be released, otherwise they are put to a death in a very graphic and excruciating execution. Despite this terrible premise, you will find yourself falling in love with every character and completely engrossed in the story. Danganronpa practically can do no wrong where story is concerned. It certainly doesn't hurt that the title's based on an anime that has already carved out an amazing story that fans loved, and all that needed to be done was to take the anime and give gamers a little bit of decision making and wha-bam, you've created magic. If I were forced to squeeze out a complaint, the only available complaint for Danganronpa's story is a lack of truly different endings, which leads fans to believe they ultimately don't really have any choices in the game. Technically, there is a second ending, but it's just a game over, not really another ending. There are two big things that I have learned from my journey with the Vita Boys. One, you guys hate that I cannot pronounce the word Takaiden. And two, gamers love murder. Needless to say, Zero Escape has loads of murder in it, and quite an amazing story to go along which has managed to make Zero Escape one of the highest rated PS Vita titles of all time. Zero Escape created the visual novel fandom that exists among PS Vita fans today, and we all can agree that in itself is an amazing achievement. Virtue's Last Reward, however, is a direct sequel to 999, which appeared on the 3DS, unfortunately calling for most fans to need to play the first title. While the title is enjoyable without playing 999, you can and likely will find yourself missing necessary facts. VLR puts the player in the shoes of Sigma Klim, who awakes in an elevator next to a girl with a very odd bracelet on. After escaping the elevator, the two find themselves in the middle of a warehouse when in the middle of what can only equate to Big Brother if all the housemates, you know, were trying to kill each other. Of course, the games soon begin and players can either work together or betray each other. Every single action is the difference between life and death. Zero Escape's largest advantage over Danganronpa comes in the form of decision making, where the decisions you make actually make a difference in the game story that you get. In fact, the game includes over 20 different endings. Corpse Party is a hybrid of visual novel and stylistic horror RPG which has worked in his favor as far as sales are concerned, allowing itself to carve out a massive following during the PlayStation Portable era. Blood Drive recently follows the tragic events of Corpse Party Book of Shadows, which once again forces players to play two different titles when only one appears on the PlayStation Vita. 
Corpse Party is set in an alternate history where players are put in the shoes of Satoshi, who even with his completely timid nature, finds himself attempting to find the mystery of the school he is trapped in, which plays host to ghosts of dead children who once attended the school. The storyline, while quite enjoyable and full of humor and horror, is extremely rushed and shoots itself in the foot because of it. Blood Drive offers a great story to fans, then pushes them through it way too fast to enjoy. Now let's take a look at the scores. Danganronpa offers a story unlike anything else, with many great character stories that connect seamlessly to create one great adventure. And finally, the character development allows all players to fall in love with even the worst Danganronpa character. Unfortunately, the game forces the player to read way too much, even for a visual novel, and lacks truly different endings. Hitting 3 out of 5, Danganronpa received 60%. Zero Escape started the visual novel powerhouse that the PS Vita library has become, which in itself is a massive achievement. A bigger plus are the 22 different endings included in the game. Unfortunately, Zero Escape would have players buy two systems just to enjoy one game. Hitting 2 out of 3, Zero Escape received 66. Corpse Party Blood Drive is full of humor and horror, and offers a very enjoyable storyline. Sadly for Corpse Party, the story is way too rushed, and of course, once again, would have you buy two games as well. Corpse Party hits 2 out of 4 for 50%, meaning the story goes to Zero Escape. Now, let's review each title's gameplay. Danganronpa's gameplay is very unique. And I don't just mean the first Danganronpa, every title in the series drastically changes gameplay styles, and sometimes even genre. In Trigger Happy Havoc, gameplay consists of you making choices, walking to different parts of the school, which you can also fast travel, talking to your classmates, looking for clues, and battling in court. Most of these actions can be done via the Vita's buttons or even the touchscreen. Totally up to you. Mainly though, you will be reading. A lot. As you live life in the school's confines, fellow classmates will be murdered, and you are then placed in the position to find clues of who committed the murder. When all clues are found, you are able to attend the class trial, which is really just a bunch of mini-games you must go through. Honestly, the gameplay can get quite weak, and without the great story to back it up, would almost not be worth playing at all. Repetitive, honestly, is the first word I think of when I hear Danganronpa's gameplay mentioned. Obviously, the point of visual novels are stories, but that does not offer an excuse to give fans boring gameplay. If a positive is to be mentioned, it would be that the gameplay has been much improved over the series. Zero Escape's gameplay can be split into two different sections. First would be the novel scenes where the story is able to shine, and second would be the escape section of the game. Originally, we wouldn't include the novel section with the gameplay score. However, Zero Escape is special. Unlike Danganronpa, players' decisions during the novel section actually impact the direction of the title. When you aren't in a novel section, you will find yourself in the escape portion of the game, which pits players against some fantastically pieced together puzzles. Picture Escape the Room, then just make it digital and you have zero escape. Yet another amazing feature in VLR is the flowchart, which allows players to go back to any previously completed section and replay it, allowing them to change the direction of the story. The only downfall for potential hardcore players is in fact the flow chart as well. The gameplay can seem awfully simple by allowing players to replay missions and even change the difficulty to easy whenever they feel like it. Corpse Party Book of Shadows consisted solely of visual novel gameplay, and it honestly lacked that extra oomph where gameplay was concerned. Blood Drive changed that and mixed visual novel with RPG elements, which of course is a big plus. Corpse Party is split into five different chapters, each of which pits players in the shoes of a different character. During each chapter, players are tasked with exploring the haunted school grounds and searching for a way to escape. The gameplay elements mixes so many different tasks into one great adventure. Tasks can include interacting with environments, searching rooms, finding hints and items, speaking with characters, and inspecting documents, all the while attempting to avoid demon-like enemies. 
Yet another plus for Corpse Party includes multiple endings, leading characters to need to be careful and watch each of their choices even closer. The only downside of Blood Drive's gameplay is the almost linear experience. Yes, the title allows gamers exploration, however, not nearly as much as one would expect from a title like this. So let's go ahead and take a look at the scores. Danganronpa's gameplay is decent. However, without the story, Danganronpa would be far from worth playing, or even buying for that matter. The only positive is that Danganronpa's gameplay manages to improve over the series. Unfortunately, the gameplay is quite weak and very repetitive. With 1 out of 3, Danganronpa's gameplay hits 33. Zero Escape is perhaps the best visual novel on the PlayStation Vita, as far as gameplay is concerned at least. Decisions made in Zero Escape will actually make a difference in the end, and the title actually has some of the best puzzles in all of gaming. Finally, the flowchart actually allows players to go back and play different parts of the title, which is a positive and a negative at the same time, because it gives players options, but also takes the title to be way too easy, alongside the fact that you can change the difficulty to easy whenever you feel like it. With 3 out of 4, Zero Escape hits 75. Corpse Party Blood Drive mixes visual novel gameplay with some amazing RPG elements, and includes so many different fun in-game tasks that combine to create one great adventure. In addition to these amazing elements, players' decisions actually matter and give gamers multiple endings. The only downside here is the almost linear gameplay experience. With 3 out of 4, Blood Tribe also receives 75. Now, let's take a look at graphics. Each game will receive one overall score. Danganronpa is somewhat basic where graphics are concerned, but that doesn't mean it doesn't contain a little bit of charm or beauty. The settings look like a diorama you would have built in a shoebox at school, and the characters resemble that of a cardboard cutout. The colors are dark and besmearing, which is perfect for such a dark game, but it still lacks where graphics are concerned. Now the in-game music is absolutely perfect and will burn itself straight into your brain. Graphics and music for Danganronpa receive 70. Zero Escape VLR's art style or graphics are absolutely underwhelming. Perhaps because 999 is originally a 3DS title, but VLR looks disturbingly worse than any average early era PlayStation 2 game. And quite frankly, it lacked any sort of charm or spunk. Ultimately, the art style does represent the dark matter of the title very well. Regardless, nobody will be picking up Virtue's Last Reward based on first sight. The soundtrack, however, is quite amazing and includes over 30 awesome songs two of which are favorites from 999. Graphics and music for VLR receive 50. Course Party Blood Drive has an obvious disadvantage, considering the title is originally a PlayStation Portable game. Keeping that in mind, Blood Drive is still mediocre at best. Now, the art style does have a certain cutesy feel to it and is quite inviting. Still, that is great and gives the game personality, however it hurts the title's ability to display true horror style gameplay to the fans. The soundtrack is decent as well, but offers no real unique difference that pops out to fans. Of course, party graphics and sound receive a 60. Overall, each of these titles have helped carve out the PlayStation Vita as one of the best place to play horror visual novels. While each are strong competitors and worth playing, only one can win. So let's count up the scores. Danganronpa receives 60 points for story, 33 points for gameplay, and 70 points for graphics and sound, giving it a total of 163 points. Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward receives 66 points for story, 75 points for gameplay, and 50 points for graphics and sound giving a total of 191 points. Corpse Party receives 50 points for story, 75 points for gameplay, and 60 points for graphics and sound, giving it a total of 185 points. The best visual novel on the PlayStation Vita is Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward. Thanks for watching and make sure to hit that subscribe button to be entered in our massive giveaway every month, including a Glacier White PlayStation Vita 2000 and hoverboard for January 2016. Yeah, we're the Vita Boys here for you. Check back every week and stay tuned. Like, comment, subscribe today to be notified. Stay up to date.
We are covering everything PS Vita. We the game giveaways, come see us. Gameplays of boxing, reviews, and more. With a lot coming and more in store. We're the Vita boys and we're here for you. Check back every week.